Hey, my name is Ryan. I am the engineer behind RimSaver, and today we're gonna do a deep dive on our wheel braking machine that we used to develop our RimSaver. So why do we even need a wheel braking machine? Well, the first reason is that we need to break a bunch of wheels and watch how they fail in order to figure out how to protect our wheels. Now there are some off the shelf wheel braking machines out there, but they're really only useful for general impacts and general wheel strength safety. For example, if you're riding down the road and you just hit a bump, the wheel shouldn't collapse, right? Useful for a lot of wheels, especially in the value focused space, but we have a pretty specific problem that we're looking to solve. And that is for higher end wheels on mountain bikes and gravel bikes, how do we prevent pinch flats and for carbon rims, rim cracks and for aluminum rims, rim dings. So I built this impact machine in CAD. This is my second impact machine that I've made in my engineering career. I was an intern at SRAM on their mountain bike wheel team and I've actually made one of these machines before, which is pretty fun. And then I combined uh, a lot of the learnings that I've had from engineering mountain bike frames and doing mountain bike frame testing. Now we reached out to our friend Noah. He did all the welding for us. I am good at bolting things together, but not welding things. Thanks, Noah. We could not have done this without you. And here we have it. Here's the whole impact machine. Uh, it's very adjustable. We want to make sure that uh, we could adjust the impact heads themselves. We want to adjust the location of the impact heads. So this anvil can move fore and aft, uh, so basically away from us and towards us so that we're hitting the rim in the exact spot that we want to be hitting. Adjustability in terms of the weights that we can add and take away from the system. We also have this quick release pin mechanism. This allows for a nice and consistent release of the impact sled. We opted to go for a linear rail uh, bushing type slide system. The reason for this is it's consistent and it doesn't have ball bearings that may break down and act differently at different speeds or act differently over time as they wear. Uh, so there is inherently more friction in this system, but the idea is that it should be more consistent over time. And then the whole linear rail uh, is adjustable up and down so we can you know, move it around and do things like fit it through doorways, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> we also have this bottom out bumper here, which I've never had to use, but you know, in the worst case scenario, if we completely destroy a rim and the impact sled keeps going, we have this sacrificial 3D printed bumper that will break and is bolted to the, the rear support. So it hopefully slows the thing down and doesn't ruin the whole machine. Now we used an off-the-shelf uh, wheel stand. It's pretty hefty, it's made out of steel. Now, in a perfect world, we'd use uh, a really hefty custom-made wheel stand, but it's not quite in the budget yet. For now, this works really well. We were able to angle the wheel stand with these solid 3D printed spacers uh, so that we can change the angle of attack for the, the impact anvil. You can see the impact anvils coming in at uh, about a five degree angle right here, or rather we've tilted the wheel five degrees. This is pretty normal. Um, the failure mode for most modern rims is from a single sided impact. So uh, this is very important. If you hit both rim flanges uh, straight on at the same time, the rim takes a lot of energy to break with or without an insert. And that's not the reason why your rims fail in the field. Usually it is a single sided impact, similar to what we're seeing here. That's why we built that adjustment into the impactor so that we could study that scenario specifically. Uh, there's also a great question that has been in the back of our minds through all of the testing, which is, should you be impact testing with a tire? Um, well, yes, you should be in a perfect world. We should be testing exactly what is written but you start to run into some practical limitations. You can see this aluminum rim here has a lot of dents in it. Now, you start off with a wheel, you make sure that you're impacting at a consistent pressure, but as soon as you damage that wheel, it's really difficult to get that wheel to hold a tubeless seal again, and we can't throw out the wheel as soon as it is dented once. And we also can't swap the rim for every single impact test that we do. So we try and get multiple hits out of the same rim. And that means uh, maintaining a tubeless seal is quite difficult. Um, so when we were 
playing with our initial testing setups on how we wanted to, on a budget, test a bunch of wheels and get a bunch of impacts out of these wheels so we didn't have to buy you know 30 or 40 wheels which we can't really do so then the question becomes can you just not put a tire on there and do your impact testing well not really because the tire does change how the rim breaks so what we ended up doing was cutting a tire and uh, putting it right over the impact spot and so for with there being no tire insert you glue the tire in place and then for when there's an insert usually the insert can hold the tire and bead into the right spot for impact and those impacts and the damage we saw from that setup was virtually identical to what we were seeing with an inflated tubeless tire obviously the energy values are different but if you're using the same tire pressure between different wheels or different tests. Um, yes, the tire does absorb some energy, but the goal here is to compare an insert with no insert. So a lot of good learnings out of this test machine. Uh, you can see we tried to stiffen it up a little bit uh, with these cables on the back. Um, the reason for that is as soon as you drop the impact anvil and there is an impact, the whole thing shakes quite a bit. Um, again, in a perfect world, you have a fully rigid steel assembly bolted to a concrete wall and a concrete floor, but it's not really something we're in a position to be able to do right now. What is important is that we tried to get it as stiff as we could, and then we're using the exact same uh, machine for all of the testing. So that's really all that matters. Anyhow, I hope you guys liked this deep dive into our wheel braking machine. Uh, please uh, leave comments below, ask any questions, we'll get back to you. It's fun stuff to dig into, it's fun engineering. And if you are interested in trying out some rim savers, you can learn more on our website, savetherims.com. We have a full lineup of rim savers now where we have everything from gravel protection all the way through downhill protection. And the main pitch of Rim Saver it's, is that it's easy to install and it doesn't change the way your bike rides. So it doesn't make it sluggish, it doesn't make it feel heavy, but it's great that you still have this protection. And since it's easy to use, you're actually gonna use it. It just keeps your stuff running longer, which means you don't have to work on your bike and you don't have to worry about getting a pinch flat or a rim failure on that big race you were training for or on that long weekend you're out riding with your friends um, and you're not going to get stuck in the woods that's the goal of rim saver make sure to like and subscribe and we will be doing some more long form videos like this so definitely let us know what you think